This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. We are going to be reviewing today Mugler, the Spring Summer 2021 Part 2 collection or presentation of the collection. Um, interesting. But before we get to it, if you like my content and my channel but haven't yet subscribed, consider subscribing today. Push that subscription button and go one step further. Push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco Ball spelled together on Patreon, and gain access to extra perks. Thank you to all my patrons and members who have already pledged. Without you, the Fashion Bunker would not be hither. Thank you also to all my co-chatters and co-reviewers of this fashion show who are with me right now because this uh, segment is being filmed live in front of a virtual audience and I have my co-reviewers in the chat section chat, chat bar right beside me. Before we get to the review, let me let you know that this video that we're going to see now falls under the fair use clause because we are taking it from the Mugler YouTube uh, channel and we are using it to review it for educational purposes. Um, I will note that, however, the music has been changed. I had to change the music. So it's not, I will not be using the original music that Mugler showed for that show, but I have taken other music that I am allowed to use. Copyright free. Okay, guys. So are you all ready for Mugler Spring Summer 2021 Part 2? Let's hit it. We got the Mugler logo. Oh, they're flipping it backwards and forwards. I wonder why they're doing this. And we got the artistic director throwing a model into the abyss. How lovely of you. And she's walking backwards. Oh, another Hadid. Oh yes, she Hadid. And we're going backwards. I see. I guess this is the leitmotiv of the show. All right, so first thing I can tell you here is we do have a little bit of the play going on with proportions, the B proportion that is so famous for uh, Thierry Nucleaire, but expanded to whatever it can be considered club kids of 2021, you know, uh, the, the lot that would like to queue up and uh, be front row and center entering to the Berghain uh, techno mecca. Times are changing after the lockdown, things might be different yet again. But this is very much a year or two ago type of style and look. So evolution from Mugler, we're not there really. But okay, let's see the juxtapositions and contrasts and shapes and harmonies or uh, lack thereof. What we are noticing is that, okay Hadid, you're flexible. After two of those rolls, we don't need another one. They did use a body double, didn't they? <laughs> Maybe they didn't. But what does pop to mind in this case is the flexibility of the garments. They are performative in many ways. Technically, if you're wearing the legging pieces, not really tight skirts, you can literally move in every direction. I would say spandex and a lot of stretchy materials are the word du jour. However, we're very minimal in uh, the actual textiles utilized here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, talk about minimal. It doesn't get any minim more minimal than this. Um, is it very Thierry Mugler? This to me is more like a Jean Provocateur lingerie meets a wannabeism of Thierry Mugler-ism. And uh, generally, when you need all of these artifacts to happen in a fashion show with a lot of back playing backwards and forwards, you kind of, what are you trying to say? That your clothes aren't strong enough? You need all of these extra tricks uh, to sell the garments to us? This just ain't it, you guys. Um, this psychedelic uh, waving and uh, textiles that are so tight, even on the model it doesn't look good. You know, all of the wrinkles in the back. 
not so good. Okay, here is a dress made in the hopes that somebody in the likes of the Kardashians would wear it. Oh, we're doing again the backwards stuff. Okay. This is not special. This is not modern. This is not a further development of Thierry Bruglia. It's not even simplifying it to make it like, oh, look, we're, we're kind of stripping it down to the core. What core? This lacks the core. This is my problem. I don't see a core here. I see garments that you kind of, you know, DIY. You buy these tight things, you know, you could get them in Target and Walmart and then just kind of cut out certain holes and create symmetry. Looks also very much like a student would make at the end of um, their first year. Like, oh look, we tried to deconstruct a jacket here. Design school, you know. Make a little cutout here, a little pattern there. <laughs> like, this is not strong enough to be Mugla. I mean, are you kidding me? You know where Mugla is coming from. This is like somebody has been a fan of Thierry Mugler and is now trying to emulate them but doesn't have a budget for it, really. This feels like Mugler on a budget. And ooh, that green fabric, it just doesn't flow very well into the other fabric. It wrinkles in a wrong way. Yeah, we've been seeing these necklaces already everywhere. Okay, so. Yeah, you fell. Mm -hmm. Transparency, is this supposed to be provocative in 2021? We've seen this already, all of this. You know when you used to watch a Thierry Mugler show and you're in awe, you, you, the show ends and you're like, okay, you, it's a cathartic process. Where is the cathartic process here? The little CGI effect of the glitter? Is that the cathartic process? Androgynous looking models? We've been there already in the 80s, in the 90s, in the 2000s, in the 2000s and 10s. Like, we've been there. That does not a Mugler piece make. And, and again, you know, using her just because she really rose to fame during Pose. I'm like, okay, so... She worked her butt off to become famous, thanks to Pose also. And now like this brand is profiting. Like, why don't you take a transgender person who is not famous and make them walk the runway instead of kind of like harvesting everything that's already been made famous or has become famous somewhere else. And, hey, more power to, to, to the lady. I'm so happy that she's in the show, but she deserves better clothes than that. Let's just put it that way. Okay, more gender bending just passed by. Great. Oh, we're walking backwards again. Really? Are we really doing the combing as well? You guys, this felt like a student project. Like Thierry Muglia is the professor at the Academy of Design and one of his students made this show as his, you know, as his show, as a tribute to his mentor, but on a budget. Jesus says, Dominique has been modeling for decades though. That's all good and fine, but now we all recognize from where that comes from. See what I mean? MK says, oh, it's already over? Was it actually a show? Huh. Yeah, I was happy to see Dominique and Earth Eater. The music was good too. Uh, I'm Louis says, Target for Mugler. I can actually see a good collection there. Yeah, this is very much Mugler for Target. <laughs> Mugler for Walmart. Um, happy days. Trying hard to be artistic and cool, but it comes across as inaccessible and ultimately the clothes are boring. Very boring. Aisha says, uh, Titi Mugler with all that sheer. Yeah, Mr. Phil Fab says, even the typeface is very design student project they made overnight. But you guys, here's the twist. Let's just take this a notch further, shall we? Um, the fact that this show, the fact that the clothes are not strong enough and then they, they, they kind of edited it and tried to make it look edgy 
by playing stuff backwards just makes the collection even weaker. Using these tricks of the trade to kind of pep up the look of something that's not there are demaskable. What does that mean? That means that your pal Jacob went a step further and prepared the continuation. So, guess what we're going to do now? A first for the Fashion Bunker. I'm going to show you the entire show, but we're going to play it backwards. So, mind you, still some pieces, even if I reverted the whole... So, basically, we watched it the way Mugler intended us to see... Mugler, the way that their team intended us to see it. But now I have reversed the whole video. So, we're going to watch it from the end to the beginning. So we're going to watch it in reverse. So all the parts that were reversed before are now going to be playing forward. So let's see what happens. I'm just doing this to go through with you um, the concept of manipulation of visuals and how brands through marketing try to appeal more to the masses. And, uh, you know, let's dissect it, shall we? We are here in our Fashion Bunker laboratory. We got this dead carcass of the Mugler collection on our table. We're going to dissect it, open it, and try to understand how it works. We're going to move around some of the organs, shift them around, and see if it works better that way. Um, yeah, <laughs> Mr. Philip Fabla says, the ending gave me that Cacharel uh, blue perfume vibe. So dated. I know, right? Uh, Darla says, hello, hello, Darla, darling. Could you recommend a Mugler collection to look at that captures true Mugler? Thank you. Well, only Thierry Mugler captures Mugler. Go for 1994, 1995 collections. Those were theater pieces. They were almost an hour long. They're also on YouTube. Okay. Now, you guys, we're going to play the show backwards, but backwards from our perspective. Let's see what happens then. See already? Much more normal. <laughs> Except what was playing forwards is now playing backwards. <laughs> that made more sense to me than it did before. So we're, we're playing everything from the back to the front. So it's a bit tricky with the uh, switch of what is the beginning and what is the end because within the original video, how they intended it, they also showed some regular walks and some reverse walks. So whatever was reversed before is regular now. Whatever was a regular walk then is reversed now. I find this version more dynamic already. What do you guys think? Still a manipulation, complete manipulation. But... Is it just me or does it flow better now? <laughs> so this is how you would actually, in a marketing team, in a creative team, you would sit through this stuff, backwards, forwards, mm -hmm. planning it out, and you would pick the one that you, you think has the most impactful uh, result. And to me, thus far, this version works better than the first version. Clothes are still boring as hell. There's no saving the clothes, you guys. But just from a marketing point of view... Thank you for subscribing, Bartosz. And thank you for subscribing to Trim Diary.
And finally we get to see the normal water pouring on the model instead of vice versa. Now that was interesting too. I like that they just dumped the water on the model before it was like this like ooh the water is kind of flowing backwards but I like the fact they just dumped the water and now we saw the water being dumped <laughs> it almost there's like this irony of it like this is so bad let's just wash it away I kind of like that much more it was more self-ironic the twirling backwards is interesting Those are just treacherous, you guys. This is like... I'm sorry for Muglea, but this is definitely a budget situation as well, huh? This is so Robert Wilson. It's so bizarre how what was frontal is backwards and vice versa, and it still feels like a total mashup of both things. Because the video works either way, you know, as we're noticing now. That's not her, that's a different model. They cut her in. They used a body double for the Hadid, you guys. That wasn't Hadid doing the flips. That was somebody else, and they cut back to her. She can't even do her own flips. <laughs> yeah, even watching it, you know, even reversing the whole video, it doesn't save it. But what it does do, it, it makes you want to go hunting for vintage Mugla pieces because it makes you understand, like, it makes you want to spend even more money on the vintages because this is going to cost more than a vintage just because it's new. But the vintage is a thousand times better and you just like feel so sad that this is so bad that you kind of go for <laughs> she's jumping on him <laughs> i love the fact that he <laughs> it's like with the water you know throwing the water over the model this is she felt so heavy the hadid played in reverse jumping onto him felt like a boulder was falling onto him that was hilarious you guys what do you think about the backwards backwards slash frontal play of it the denim makes me want to vomit, says Jack. Jesus is in love with Dominique's body. Girl, who can do flips, girl, says Jack. I know, right? Kinonsa says, are those sparkly looks crystals or are they glitter? They're, I think they're crystals. Tigoni says, the video is like a video from a graphic design student. Seems interesting somehow from that point of view. The clothes look cheap. Some look like clothes for prostitutes or strippers. Uh, yeah, kind of. Yes, Rich Mitch got some good boobies. <laughs> MK says, this is better. The original version is just full of what we commonly call mannerisms, which are aimed at hiding the lack of originality or groundbreaking ideas. I agree. The titty lady is copying a look Mugler did in the 90s, says Mr. Philip. Aisha says, could they not afford light bulbs at this place? <laughs> this is not about the clothes. I know, right? Mr. Phillips says, guess the project was only done by one student who spent a, un a unit blanche putting this whole thing together overnight, didn't give uh, the time to review it. Frau Emily says, that's why they put the lights off, because the clothes look mediocre. Logic. But Olfactive Stories loves the models. Says, wow, these models. Oli, hello, Oli. Oli says, to do some consulting for these. Oh, 
Uh, Jacob needs to do some consulting for, the, yeah, I think it's, I don't know if it's savable, to be honest with you, because they have to change from the core. They got to really change so much. Um, there's a lot that they got to change. Uh, Jack says, I can see both working. Yeah, I guess. They chose these women with really strong characters and looks, but the clothes don't do them justice. Good point, Jesus. Mr. Philofabulous says, the switch is better than the original edit. I think so. <laughs> I think so. They're both bad, though. But Rich Mitch says, striking woman. Be careful, Rich. A lot of them are, you know, not biologically born women. So, you know, just letting you know. <laughs> I don't know who you want to. Which which one of them would you like to date? Uh, as a straight man. Uh, Jack says, Mugla sent in their assassins. Yeah. Kinonso says, I love how Jacob really reversed the video for us. Of course I would go, I was going to do that. When I review, I review my way, but I review. For the haters out there, stay tuned for more. Uh, they can rebrand to stripper chic, says Mr. Philip Fabulous. Yes, of course. And listen, we love us a good stripper. Oh, and I always support the sex workers, you guys. We love us a good stripper. But... And here's the but. Be honest about it. Make a collection for the stripper. I would find that amazing that Mugler says, hey, this collection is dedicated to this, all the strippers out there. And you go for it. And you create something magical for the strippers. Something, something that could help them work better, be more inspired. You know, be honest about it. Make a stripper collection. I think that would be incredible and groundbreaking for a luxury fashion house to make a whole collection of dedicated strippers. That is groundbreaking. But this other thing, like making like little bourgeoisie outfits that look like stripper things, no, boo, no. Um, the water on model model is hot, <laughs> says Rich Mitch. Antigone says... Definitely, Jacob. Jack says, what do you think would be provocative in 2021, Jacob? Uh, okay, that's a good question, Jack. Uh, actually, I'm going to answer this question and then we're going to end it. Uh, this video has been long enough already as is. So I think what would be provocative, and I said this uh, in regards to Vivian Westwood. Um, like, for example, what would be provocative in my opinion? You know, Vivian is famous for doing... She would dress models in... 4,000 pounds worth of, you know, expensive couture dress. And then she would, you know, sit them in the dumpster. Like that was like punk, like this expensive dress. And then like the model is sitting in garbage, you know, like that just a juxtaposition that Jürgen Teller loves to photograph. <sighs> that ain't it. What is groundbreaking, in my opinion, listen closely, you guys. What have we been dealing with these past years? during the Trump period, the lockdown period, and all that shit that we had to go through. We've been dealing with politics more than we have ever dealt with before in our lives. Just a couple of years ago, I did not really care about politics. I've been forced to care about them because I realized that all the wrong people are at the top because not enough people cared about politics. And so these idiots win elections so we got to mobilize. We got to wake the F up and vote for the right people or put the right people in a position to be voted for. So this is what's groundbreaking for me in fashion. Take that Vivian Westwood couture dress, okay, that she would put on a model and sit the model in a dumpster. I say dress that model up in that expensive couture, place her in the parliament and photograph her on the main chair of the parliament person or of the president's desk or office, bring fashion into politics. That's groundbreaking. Nobody dares to do that. That's what will be groundbreaking today, to bring that aesthetic of fashion and all those, you know, bubble heads that follow fashion, wake them up too and make them realize this is where it's at because your vote matters. And what will be really groundbreaking is to see these models sitting in the parliament as if they were a part of the parliament, as if they were a part of the people in power, not just in parliament, but in governmental offices, in the Senate, um, in the House, uh, depending on what country you're in, there's different, you know, 
governments are structured in different ways. That would be groundbreaking. Today, ask me in another year, I'm going to tell you something else. Obviously, things change, moods change, but that would be groundbreaking today. Showing some hooker chic in a black room with some lights and playing the video backwards, what the hell is groundbreaking about that? Nothing. Nothing. This hooker chic stuff from Mugla, put all of those models dressed in hooker chic in a parliament. Now that already makes me think in a good way. Just saying. So you guys, you know what I mean? Um, yes, madame. Balenciaga did a Bernie Sanders campaign, logo inspired pieces, but that was not groundbreaking. You know why that was not groundbreaking? Because they did it just to sell to the Democrats. <laughs> you know, they were like, Side, you know, what would have been groundbreaking would be if the clothes did not say Bernie Sanders, but people wore the clothes, the Balenciaga clothes, at Bernie Sanders summits, meetings, meet and greets, what have you, and taking photos there, creating the lookbook by traveling to the places where Bernie was talking and giving his speeches and, and using those photos for, for the marketing, not putting Bernie on, the, on a beanie. No, that's not groundbreaking. But putting a regular Balenciaga beanie on a model that's then in the crowd at the Bernie Sanders summit and taking pictures there and using that for promo material, that is groundbreaking. Um, just, you know, just saying. Anyway, for those of y'all who uh, haven't subscribed yet, but, uh, you know, now is your chance. Subscribe to my channel here on YouTube and push that join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Join me on Patreon and become a patron today. Get your name listed here on the sidebar as a co- uh, and as an executive producer of the Fashion Bunker. Thank you so much to all of my patrons and members who have already pledged. And thank you also to all my co-reviewers in uh, the chat section. I hope you've enjoyed this video. What, what can I tell you? <laughs> it's like... Being groundbreaking today is also not as vital. And this is also something groundbreaking. In fashion, a lot of people strive always towards being groundbreaking, groundbreaking, groundbreaking. That's also outdated. It's the that effortlessness of not having to try too hard that is actually groundbreaking. Much more groundbreaking than editing a video to play backwards and forwards, creating little effects that you would learn first day in editing school. That ain't groundbreaking, boo. And you're paid to step in the footsteps of Thierry Mugler, one of the most genius designers of our time, still living, by the way. And that's all you deliver? Girl, Houston, we got a major problem. Major problem. Fashion world is sick to the core. It's sick to the core. It's dying. I mean, it's actually already dead. But as in every good horror movie, it could be resuscitated perchance. Let's see if we manage to do that. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.